Good morning. Hi, Dave. I had hoped to have more time to do some pull requests, but uh, that didn't happen. So, yeah, I was looking for something to review, and I was like, "Oh, <clears throat> um, I'm going to suggest." I did one pull request just a few minutes ago. It's very trivial, um, uh, and um, I reviewed it. It's less trivial. Oh. It, it should be trivial, but there's some. <clears throat> Typo. Words to discuss. Yeah. Well, yeah. the typo is trivial, but. Okay. Um, and I thought we could walk through the rest of Hank's um, uh, tickets that he's opened. If Hank is here, then I would like he his view coming. on the question that I asked at the end last time, given that I haven't done the work yet. And it sounded like you and Ned actually had opposite uh, uh suggestions and i don't have a suggestion yet until i actually try to do the work because i i, I may find that um that one of them is more correct than the others when i actually try to move text but okay but hank's not here yet so and I, today was the day i wasn't sure if hank was going to make it given it's good friday uh he said he would try okay he seemed to have implied that that he was going to make, try to do it. Hi, Ned. Hi, Wei. Hello, how are you? Penglin Yang, I don't know your name. Maybe you could introduce yourself. Hello, my name is uh... Hong Lin Yang, and I'm from China Mobile Research Institute. And uh, now I'm studying the trust computing and the remote attestation. I just uh, uh, in the group for a few weeks. Uh, I'm still keep watching okay. the documents. Okay. Could you Great. tell me? I missed your affiliation. Could you tell me? China Mobile. Again? Oh, okay. Thank you. China Mobile. Thanks for being here. Yeah. If you if you uh, have opinions or, or things you want us to discuss, please speak up. This is great. Okay, okay, I know. Um, I'm not hearing back from Hank, although he answered my message ten minutes ago. Um, so you didn't like. Let's just start with what you didn't like here. Dave, you had okay, it should be short. It's not maybe trivial, but uh, okay. So one thing was trivial, which is deleting the the the. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Um, and so actually, number three is closer to the second comment. It's a duplication the second comment. Number two is, can we find a term that doesn't say considerations are mitigated? Is it you know security threats or security issues yeah. or something? All right. Because some some considerations are maybe yeah. positively spent, spun, right? So all right, so let me uh, commit this suggestion so that we yeah fix double words and comma. Um, uh, there wasn't a comma, but that's okay. It was just okay. double spaces, but yeah. Okay. Okay. So then we're uh, trying to deal with this. It did not merge the commit. It still has the 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 there. I don't know if you need to refresh or whatever. I just want to make sure it didn't get dropped. So, okay, now it's there. Uh, I would say that threats is probably okay. Uh, right. Okay, that looks good to me. Uh, not considerations. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. And your other comment uh, is security, physical security, the factory part of an implementation. I think so. Yeah. Um, to and, some people, implementations refers to the code. Um, but here, there's actually multiple meanings of implementation there, right? And so in one sense, it's correct. In another sense, it's not correct. And so as long as you always think of it as being that way, I don't know if there's any way to be more clear about it, but. Uh... 
So I'm so, thinking that so it's not that, wrong, right? So I, that's why I phrase this in as a question, not as a please fix, because you could argue it's actually correct as written. Yeah. So, but it may be less obvious to tell people that we're. Um, I'm thinking like, like we want to say both code and uh, f infrastructure, such as at the factory. Yeah. The the bullet. Th Three of the previous comment was really commenting on the word proposal in 1291. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I could ask the same question. Is uh, physical security of a factory considered yeah. part of a specific proposal? Well, so I would, read it as, against, I would read but, it as such because it includes the, the top to bottom of the beginning yeah, to yeah, end yeah. of the whole process. Yeah, so if that's the intent, right, it's, it, it, that... You're trying to convey, you're not expecting the working group to ever see a specific proposal, ever, right? Because nobody's going to send the IETF a proposal for how to secure a physical factory, right? Yes. Okay. So you're not trying to say, okay, this is a requirement for, say, internet draft that describes a protocol or anything. That's not what you're trying to say here, because that's only a tiny subset of this. Well, um, so, you know, let, let's just pick on FIDO, for instance. Let's say FIDO, you know, uh, um, has a, a protocol that does everything. That for FIDO to then not to, to, I would expect them to then say, and this relies on this, uh, some uh, kind of level of security in the factory. And that um, if you fail that, then the protocol breaks. And they should say that in their considerations. Yeah, but I'm saying that's not a, that's a full proposal because even from that statement, you cannot tell whether those issues have yeah. been mitigated well. Agreed, agreed. Okay, so... Um, so I guess the text here is not wrong. It's just, um, I guess the question is, what is the expectation? Because one reader could misread this by saying, yep. okay, when I run writing an internet draft uh, uh, or FIDO, uh, writing another standard or whatever, I have to mitigate all of these. And the third statement could be, I have to implement all of these. And both of those would be incorrect readings of your intent. So, Yeah, so I want to add a sentence here. So you see why I said that this isn't trivial, right? It's straightforward, yeah. but not trivial. So to yeah. figure out what's the right word. So, um, because the first time that I had read it, I had read these both wrong, and that's why I commented. So, some I had read threat. 21 about what you expect to be in a IETF document in a draft. I didn't think about the final case at the time. And 1292, I thought you were talking about what you'd write in code, and, and both of those are not your intent. So. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to wing something here. Some threats apply yeah. to protocols and some threats uh, uh, are against physical infrastructure. Well, there's, uh, Such there's as factories. Enumerate, there's actually three categories, right? Because there's okay. protocols, there's code, and there's uh, physical infrastructure. And an example of one that applies to code is the text that talks about uh, protecting stuff inside of it, protecting code inside of a TEE. We actually have some code about that. Or sorry, some um, uh, text about that. Uh, and then a comma after your uh, code parenthesis. Oxford comma. Yeah. There you go. Factories. Um... All three, uh, all three are implied by implication or uh, by implementation or period. I think it's good. Just like this period. This period. Okay. Uh, no. Uh, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, you before you do that, um, you have two sentences there, mm -hmm. You're using implementations in both sentences, and implementations has a different meaning in those two okay. sentences. Realizations. Sure. Is it Zed in the United States? It, yes. No, okay. you, 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 uh, yeah, your uh, red spell checker must be set to uh, UK and, style. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, that looks okay to me.
Any other objections? Not looking. No, I guess we're me. not getting Hank. I guess we're not uh, getting Hank. I guess Ned, any comments? <clears throat> uh, I'm okay with it. Okay, so All right. um, I can feel like we've accomplished something since we merged one thing. All right. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so um, I was hoping to ask Hank about this. I didn't couldn't figure out his connection. I don't know if anyone else did figure that out. Um, uh, leave it on the screen here. Let me read it. Okay, uh, I understand what the original text meant. I understand your comment. I don't understand Hank's thing, so I think I'm with you right now. Yeah, okay. Uh, all right, well, what else can we do today? Um, we have these bunch of issues. Um, change the title. Um, I just corrected a typo in the title, so. Yeah. Okay. Um, most of these seem to be suggestions for improvement rather than yeah. knowing what we're going to do. Yep. Um, and you had your question that you wanted to go back to about your... Well, uh only because your comment and Ned's comment were uh, expressing opposite preferences, so. Okay. Ned, so oh. So I wanted you to be go. able to read uh, Ned's comment and see if you have any comments on Ned's comment, so. Is it... Do you want me to explain what I'm trying to? Yeah, yeah. that'd be helpful. <clears throat> so, I, I, I'm open to be convinced either I read way the right email. now. I, don't have an I read it. I read it when it came in an email, and I was like, oh, I don't know. I'm going to I'm gonna punt so, the time. Yeah. <clears throat> so basically, um, we mm -hmm. last time we discussed the possibility of writing a section 8.0, which is kind of an introduction to what we mean by a conceptual message. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> but we did also. Uh, so when I looked at, went through and was looking at what was there, there, there were some sentences in the introduction that were describing e essentially what we mean by conceptual message and they were just sort of added as as sort of an aside and they were uh describing you know a, a particular message in other words in the context of describing a message we threw in some explanation of hey this is a conceptual message but without really saying those words so what I was trying to do is say, take, trim those, you know, two or three sentences from the intro, put it into section 8.0, and then, and then substitute, you know, the, the the specific message name with the with you know the text conceptual message, so that it applies applies broadly across all of the messages, <clears throat> and then what's left over is. It is sort of a well, you know, one way or the other. So I, I opted for putting all of the conceptual message definitions <clears throat> together in the section below because the the you know overview ex, uh, explanation sort of in prose, you know, refers to all of them in one way or another already. So, so uh, whereas I had argued for removing endorsements from here and moving it up to here. You're arguing for. Are you? Are would you? Well, there were two sections. There were two yeah. sections. So the previous yeah, policies was combined into one section. So it's just, the, yeah. There's just two sections, and and if you pull out the detail for mm -hmm. hey, this is a conceptual message mm -hmm. property. You have you know in one the reference values section has one sentence in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's like. Well, yeah. 
Yeah, so right. So in Ned's proposal, we would move uh, three one and three two down to like eight four and eight five, or some other intelligent reordering, as you point out, um, if there's a better way to reorder them. But yeah, um, I would be fine with that. I think. Okay, and if if I mean, we want to go with that direction, I, I'm happy to do the work. But um, I I. I... I heard that you were happy to do work, so. <laughs> Hank is joining us. Um, I, I guess I don't feel strongly one way or the other, um, but I see that the current state is poor. Um, I, I feel strongly about getting somebody else to do work, so. Um... <laughs> <laughs> you can sign it to me if you want. I, I have no preference on which way to do it, but uh, I do have a preference. If somebody else is going to do it, then that suddenly gives me a preference. So. <laughs> All right. So give us a proposal, Ned, and uh, okay. we'll figure it, it you, out. The, the, the approach that you wrote up in your comments look uh, look okay, look okay to me. So. Okay. And here is Hank coming. There oh. he is. There's Hank. Yeah. You right, know, I will can... probably want to wordsmith some stuff afterwards, but I can't tell you ahead of time what I'm going to do. But uh, in terms of the, the massage, moving the text around, massaging it, and taking first cut, I appreciate you, just, you uh, volunteering. So, Hank, we want to walk through some of the of your other tickets because some of them we don't understand. Uh, which is fine. Quick question to the remaining. Sorry, by the way, I'm late because I did not find the invite did not find it by looking for it right over link so i'm very sorry uh doesn't seem to be in my inbox i don't know why um the pull request that is still open did we abandon that did we push that back, back to lawrence there was a reply recently we haven't was there yes and so um um my question is is what what's our open action there was there any change recently what's the last thing in the 17 days ago. Well, that was he mentioned it. He did not they pushed anything. He mentioned it in another issue. Oh, yeah, that might be also the case. So, um, so, but we, we, so we I think we, Lawrence still has the action item on this one. Does he know that he has an action item here? Don't know. Maybe not. Because I am not, I'm, I don't, I don't think that we, we, we indicated anything, right? About other, that's just, just another. Question because that's that was I think when I was reviewing this stuff uh, unclear to me. Um, but we can do the issues first, of course. Did you resolve anything already or uh, something? Yeah. Well, we I we we worked we we dealt with a uh, uh, an introduction that I added to the security considerations, saying they're not really. We they need to be evaluated against a real protocol or a real implementation. They have to or they don't have to sorry I they have to they have to okay yeah evaluate okay, it that is meaningless <laughs> that it's mean you can't you can't apply yeah. the security considerations to the architecture because the architecture is abstract so you won't really know what, what it does um <clears throat> okay all right um, well let's 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 since since lawrence has pointed at this issue introduction um, of trusted anchor go ahead dave so this one i do have an opinion on yes um i think my opinion on hink's question is yes and uh, opinion on uh, Lawrence's suggestion is um, no, um, in terms of taking it out. Um, but yes, requires an introduction or reference or something. Um, the by analogy, the TEEP architecture document does use the same term, and I think has more of a, a context introduction type stuff. Um, but uh, it, the other point is that that term is not only in that section. There's other sections that also use it. So like the verifier section and trust model also uses that same term. And so um, it's wider than just this section. This issue is wider than the section. It just so happens that the sections that Hank points to is the first occurrence. And so that's why find a file it that way. And so if you want to assign this one to me, um, that's okay because I know what we did in TEEP. Um, I can't use the same approach here in uh, TEEP, there's a much more natural approach because there's a whole section uh, in the TEEP architecture on who has what keys, okay? And so the trust anchor store um, 
would be uh, used in context by referencing that particular discussion, which we don't have a similar discussion in our ants architecture. So I have to come up with some other way to do it. But um, given that I did the text in the TEEP architecture document. Where, 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 and, does, where does trust anchor store show up in this section? Um, you search for the word trust anchor store. It's in the second paragraph of the verifier subsection, which I think is 7.4. Uh, and it's twice in the in uh, the section that Hank pointed to, at least twice. Layered attestation. Layered attestation environments. It's oh. in the. Third Why didn't I find sentence. it? Okay, there. So there we go. It's that's I find it. Okay. Yep. Yep. So there's All twice. Right. So there. are you proposing to put a a a, a definition or? Uh, I'm proposing that the answer to Hank's question is yes to do something. I haven't decided what yet. But given that Hank, that uh, Ned just volunteered for the other one, I'm happy if you assign this one to me to figure out. So for next time, uh, I'm not quite sure what the easiest way to do it is. But trust anchor store is the right term to use across IETF docs for this concept. Um, I agree. There might be a reference we can just cite, or a sentence to add, or both. I'm not sure, but okay, great. Um, it just. Uh, just I have to look to see what do we do for the term root of trust? Did we define that or reference something for the term root of trust, which is a different concept? We didn't go do either of which, <clears throat> I think. We just uh, used we, it. We hand waved yeah, we, it. We, we did. We defined it uh, so, oh. uh, informally in a sentence. If you look for a quote root of trust, quote, you'll find it. Uh, I mean, it's sort of uh, it. defined by being used the first time. It's a uh, root of trust. We didn't. We didn't try to cite a definition, though. Yep, there you we go. Really didn't. I remember talking about this at yeah, the beginning, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I remember we said, "Oh, this is such a uh, pig in a blanket," or I don't know what the right word is. Um, yeah. That, so here it's defined yeah. in context as uh, a component that is intended to provide trustworthy device identity and protected storage for measurements. That's our informal definition of root of trust. Right. Um, but it's only under typically, right? So it's it's not formal, right? So I might be able to do something similar, but I think that there's already definitions elsewhere in other documents about trust anchor store. I might be able to just reference. So, well, it's used a lot in this paragraph, huh? Yeah, but it's a different kind because root of trust is like the piece of hardware, for example, yeah. whereas trust anchor store is the place that you stick your root keys, for example. So, yeah. Or your uh, certificate paths. Right, right. Yeah. Your your, yeah. your trusted root certificates or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. I'll see if I can find a, an appropriate reference to to cite. So, given that it's, it's okay. common across many docs in the ITF. So. Okay, so I'm fine with you doing it, Dave. If you like to do it, and it sounds like you are have a, an appropriate experience, apparently. Well, the, the one that I was going to spend time on first, Ned just volunteered to do, and so that means that I'm happy to step up on one or more of these other ones. So. All right, so let's look at some other issues here. Um, this one, I clicked on the tab by random, so here we go. <laughs> Few words on why is that that is the case are needed. I don't even understand. Why is the case that you only need integrity or why we don't need confidentiality? Is that what you're saying, Hank? I'm trying, I have to read the sentence. Let, let, yeah. let me finish it. And by the way, the text quoted is old text. We've um, updated that, if you remember, to talk about the confidentiality is not necessary for the public key. So there's an if here. And the yeah. if is the problem. The if is totally, it's just a claim. And and uh, it, it is a phrase so abstract that, first of all, I was like, why am I reading this? And then, okay, probably there's a reason, but I can't see the reason. So my question is in the issue now. <clears throat> so. Uh, Dave, Dave was saying that there's other text that hasn't been merged yet, or no? No, no, no. Already, I was saying we've already. We've it's already... The, the bottom paragraph on the screen. It's the bottom paragraph on the screen right now. The another way to provision key material. Uh, I was saying the quote is is now been touched, but it doesn't. It's not part of Hank's point. Hank's point is talking about the if there in the second line. Exactly. And if it's so low, it's hard to read for me because the WebEx elements are over. It's so I've zoomed in. Thank you. So yeah, it seems to be the same thing. So basically the weird sense, if public key cryptography is used, then only integrity is necessary, which I can't parse. Seriously, what does that mean? It's just, it, it sounds to me like it's just, 
a, a mini tutorial on public key cryptography and that the, the public portion is public, which is seems like you don't have to okay. keep the public you know. part private. I think if you're Where using a but, protocol, you need integrity. So that's also true. So I don't even know what this means. To be honest. Yeah, but if you, if you if you go down the path of privacy, then you have to keep the public key confidential because of privacy requirements. So. <clears throat> oh, what he is trying to say is the public key is not confidential. That's what the last sentence as, is trying to say. Is that? The, and I don't. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, security, yeah, the if the, the if. Is, we meant when we said public key, we really meant public. Just, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like, yeah, we don't need to put that in there. I just delete it. So, 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 so the the well, oh, I I think we put it in for a reason. The the point is that the attestation, the 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 security of the attestation mechanism does not depend upon the confidentiality of the public key. You could keep it confidential for privacy reasons. But that the attestation does not depend upon it. Yeah, I so, see. This is the last sentence. So, so I here, don't get what the if means. <laughs> um, okay, so may, maybe we can replace both of those last two sentences with a with a, a sentence about the opposite parity, which um, I might even merge it with the previous paragraph. So let me just say it out loud. Starting. Okay, now I can't say it out loud. Okay, so I was going to read it. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. All right, so I'm going to start with the previous paragraph. I'm going to try to read it, read the two sentences, and then add a third sentence. That's kind of what I'm thinking. So, it could, because I'm proposing to merge the two paragraphs. So, in general, a combination of some physical security measures and some cryptographic measures is used to establish confidentiality protection. Another way to provision key material is to generate it on a device and export the validation key. Uh, if public key cryptography is being used, then confidentiality protection applies to the private key, period. Okay, so validation key and public key are the same thing here, yeah? Oh, uh, yes. Then well, I would if using public the key cryptography word. is being used, are the same thing. They're, yeah, they're, so, they're only the same thing if, if that if is true, right? If you're using symmetric keys and the validation key is a symmetric secret key. I see, okay. Uh, so yeah, I, I would say that so to make the semantic connection to us, so if the validation key is a public key or something, but that uh, yeah, 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 okay, <laughs> that's right. If the validation key is uh, uses public private key cryptography, meaning you got to keep yeah. pair right, then uh, then confidentiality protection applies to the private key. Oh, and now I get it because in symmetric keys it is. Very important to have that confidentially protected, whatever the okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Right. So this is so weirdly phrased that something yeah. so obvious was eluding me here. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. So, so, so what? Well, but I, yeah. So, right. so I'm just there, there may be privacy. You think if it was, uh, if it was talking about the private key rather than saying, well, public keys are public. I said, well, that's not the point. The point is talking about the private key, right? So. So, uh, Dave, I think I would go on and 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 add add a, another point, which is that um, there may be privacy reasons to keep the the public key confidential. If there are no. So, is the validation reasons? Is can the validation key be a symmetric key in this paragraph? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, does we, that we think we think it's unscalable, another... but but people could do it. And, and so, yes, I agree with your point, Michael, about privacy reasons. That that that, that is a good point. So so it, about, you know PII, right? If I get somebody's public key of their device, it's basically I I I have a unique identifier of that device. That's Michael's point. Should, should there be a line on if symmetric key cryptography is being used, then whatever confidentiality of the shared secret key. Needs to be but I whatever you're no, getting this boilerplate text. It's just reiterating how cryptography is so much going to age so much each works. That's yeah. what it does. Right. No, it, right. no it, it, it is, it is, it is. But because there's, because there are privacy reasons to keep the public key confidential, some people yeah. might believe that the attestation depends upon that, that the, the quality of the attestation depends upon the public key being confidential and the point is it does not and you mean evidence, you lose privacy but you don't you lose security if 
I could say those okay. are two different things. Yeah, but maybe right? we just grab the whole thing and just say that then, because the other thing is kind of, I don't know, from top of the blue, uh, explaining how cryptography works. All right. Well, yeah, I'll, I, I will take, right. I will, I, I've heard what Dave said, if, mm -hmm. and I, I believe I can remember it long enough to put, make a pull request. Um, so I'll okay. take that on. Um, where did that go? Okay, so Thank again, uh, for me, this had, this this text failed to convey something super simple to me. I was like, why? And so, yeah, <laughs> I think, thank you. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, sorry to being the stickler here, but uh, this was I guess really we got a little disrupting my uh, flow of reading. Um. Oh, you opened all the tabs, and now yeah, I see. So that's why I have the problem with not there okay so i will assign it to me we'll go on all right um i think this is self-explanatory we just need somebody to write it any volunteers yeah i'm gonna go what on it, what does appendix say about it's a timing stuff table and scenarios mm -hmm. okay uh I guess if nobody else volunteers, you can assign it to me. No one else is going to volunteer after you I said that. I feel like I have to pick up at least two of these since Ned picked up the, picked up the, the, the other one from me. So now, now, now I'm good. I can. Now you're good. You won't volunteer any of that. Okay. Um, better integration. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta share, share, share the wealth, right? So we got multiple editors on the docs. So. Um, yes, exactly. Um, Better integration of the unprotected evidence concept into the verifier trust model might be useful. Not it. I think this needs to be Hank since he's written all the UCCS <laughs> yeah. docs, all the oh, UCCS yeah, okay. specs. Okay. Okay, I take it. Okay. Roles and entities. Which section is this? Roles and entities. Yeah, I was surprised it's... how not appropriate the example was. It was like, why <laughs> do I even read this? Um, yeah, for example, so second of the last paragraph. An entity that both connects to a wide area network and to a system bus is talking on both the attest and verifier roles. Yeah, whatever that exactly means. So, and as system bus connectivity, and so, so this is basically a entity can take on, so uh, uh, take on both at the same time the role of a tester and one layer of rats, and then the layer of uh, the, the role of verifier another layer of rats. These are actually not collapsed roles in a single layer, which I think what this is about. Right. Yeah. This so is, you're uh, saying. This, yeah. Right. You're, the collapsed entity is really where you want to say that the relying party is also the verifier. For, for example, exactly yeah. the same so, attestation layer. Yeah. Okay. So here, why not just delete this paragraph? If now that I, I say that partly because another example was added to this section recently, and so two paragraphs above was the text that used to be in the reference value section, and we said we should move down to here because it was combining of roles. So this was text that was an example elsewhere that moved into the section. So we've already got a new example in the section. So I'm thinking it's actually easier to just delete the paragraph Hank doesn't like. So which makes sense to me. I, I agree with your rationale. So. All right, well, that's, you know, within my abilities to do so. I think I'll <laughs> volunteer to do that. I, I, I know how to delete paragraphs. They're really good at them. It's, it's I when I do it unintentionally. It. Not if I do it unintentionally, that's the question. I might just delete some other paragraphs to see if you notice, too. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, like me. Uh, I also I seem to have done this. Well, if, if we don't notice, it, you probably found another program. We don't need, so. <laughs> exactly. That's fine. <laughs> I've been put, trying to drag myself away through uh, the Catch Twenty Two sequel. It's not as good as you think. And so, I'm, I'm, uh, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm interrupting. Uh, sorry, it was just an aside. There's a there's a there's a a case where the character randomly he's charged with uh censoring letters from the you know 
uh, troops back home and he just randomly censors letters words from the you know like every second letter he censors for fun right see if the letter still makes sense um <laughs> sorry if you haven't yeah, read so, catch 22 uh, it's a great book you have to read it anyway uh this one here um <laughs> Layered attestation is where this, uh, I, I have been your attesting environment, and as I have uh, uh, rubber stamped you as uh, being trustworthy, now you are at tag, and now the other layer is it. So so there, uh, I think we have a lot of um, abstract text that explains that, and I yeah. think that is fine. But uh, a real world example where trust is handed off from the, I don't know, Bias to the bootloader to the kernel or something like that. Oh, I see now. So now because that's your chain of trust and uh, 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 chain of trust was also, I think, mentioned already in a comment somewhere else. So uh, um, that would be, I think, something to do here. But it was so invasive that it was is there is there anymore. is yeah. there a diagram and or text that we could uh, lift and quote from some other document, CCC or I don't know what. Something I don't think you need a diagram uh, because I think the existing diagram, because the whole point is there's already yeah. a, 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 a chain. You just need a list, you know, A, B, and C. So it goes from, you know, ROM to the first stage bootloader to, um, you know, if you're talking about the normal world, it would be to something like, you know, UFI or, you know, Grub and Linux and so on. Or in a TEE, you might have, you know, going through the trust, you know, RMTF A into Opti into a TA. So it says example, this right? example. So I would sit, change this yeah. paragraph, um, continuing with this example, or it put it after this thing. Uh, a real world example in, in would be we already talked about BIOS, but you know, yeah, I, I, I guess see, what you're saying so is that yeah. I, I think that what you're saying is that it while it tries to be uh it, it has some specifics, but at the same time it's trying to be abstract. So it doesn't mention Ufi and it doesn't it says something about the kernel, but you know, it doesn't say who's kernel. Um so do, do it, it, how much of a problem is this? I mean, it gives a case where uh, you have a read-only BIOS, and because uh, we re relabeled these, right? So then B was was B the kernel. I'm trying to read this sentence here because yeah, after we because uh, remember it was originally different, and we said, well, that was wrong, and then we updated it so that A is now the read-only BIOS. B is uh, let's see, C is the kernel. B is what the firmware. Yeah, sorry. A, A is the read-only BIOS. B is the, the bootloader. Bootloader. B, 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 bootloader. Example right now. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Could so you scroll can... up a little bit? Sorry again to interrupt. Could you scroll up a little bit uh, uh, above this here? Is all of this introduced as an example? Yes, all this is where? an example. Yeah, but yeah, where actually, this is inconsistent. That? This is inconsistent now, actually. Because B is the uh, bootloader and C is the kernel. Uh, you are right. We missed that. Mm -hmm. That was probably my fault. I probably was the one to change the text below and missed that sentence. All right. You got to sign that one to me. All uh, right. Well, I should say the one that you just highlighted, I should say, when I say that one, the one that you called out. So. Yeah, but uh, if you just keep this for one second, um, that's because um, um, could you scroll up a little bit again? Because I do not see this introduced as being an example. That was my problem, I think. It's, it starts, there is an illustration, and then it starts with the details. It doesn't say why we are now talking about the illustration. Then if you scroll below the illustration, it starts to get to the details of the illustration, yada, 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 for two very long sentences, paragraphs, for three, actually. And then it says, this example could be extended and continue <laughs> this example. So, so it doesn't, but so wait, suddenly there's it's more. Example, you know? I think that is my problem. I think that is why I think an example was missing because it started super deep into a, this figure, but it is not clear to the reader, oh, this is now an example. Maybe that is my problem. Okay, I'm going to fix this right now. So give me yeah. uh, two minutes. Mm -hmm. So my need for example was probably at that point because like, okay, you're really detailed. Why? And yeah, because this is already it. So we don't have an abstract picture of layout at the station. 
No, it's easier to define it by an example. So sorry, mm -hmm. it's easier to explain it by example. But, uh... So uh, what's not abstract about the figure? Well, because we we jump right into the using it as an example. In the paragraph I, above, I, the paragraph before the. Yeah, the the fact that there's exactly three layers A, B, and C. Well, not three layers. There's three environments A, B, and C is an example because in general it's an arbitrary number that's one or more, right? And so anytime so, so, you stop so at our, C, right, it's an example. So our our our. Our diagram attempts to be all abstract by talking about ABC, but we're actually being talking about BIOS bootloader and kernel yeah. later. So so we're we've we've abstracted it without any benefit. And the abstraction is N that it's N uh layers. You, um right. You could and we didn't, you know, you put like a dot dot dot. Uh, we know, didn't put the right dot dot dot. Yeah. Um and I think at one point yeah. we had had more than one uh, intermediate layer, but then we removed it because the the diagram was too big. Yeah, so I, I okay, I'm telling you what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that the uh, that it's easier to to walk through a specific example and then end with a statement that says, in general, there could be an arbitrary number of uh, layers and other implementations, right? But uh, walk through one example first and then say how to generalize it, rather than trying to come up with a picture that's a generalizable one. I don't know that there's much value in having a general picture and a specific picture, both. Um, but um, in that approach, I guess my question for your wall, um, since you'd mentioned A, B, and C are, are sort of generic, because it's trying to make the labels on these be generic, would you prefer a diagram that doesn't use A, B, and C, but uses BIOS bootloader and uh, kernel and the diagram? Or would you prefer that the diagram stay A, B, and C, which is partly generic? I I would suggest that I think that you're right. We should put the the actual things into the diagram. It'll make for better comprehension. Um, we might want to put an A after the, you know, the BIOS and a B after the bootloader and a uh, C after the kernel in parenthesis for for uh, generalization. Mm -hmm. uh, for that generalization <clears throat> sentence. I think that sentence is going to want to say something like, there could be, you know, multiple instances of B. Yeah, um, I, I think that there's already text that does that um, at the bottom of the section here. I can read it to see if it needs any tweaks or whatever, but I think that the last two paragraphs in the section already do that. Okay, so I think you're uh, right. Uh, I, I have not done that. I have on my machine so far, I fixed the sentence above the diagram, but I have not like tried to relabel anything in the diagram. Would you like me to try to do it all in one pull request, or would you like to review the one sentence now? I think we can trust you on the one sentence to get right. Um, so I think it's better to look at it all as one. Okay, one big in that case, case, just assign this one to me, and I'll see if I what I can do for next time. But I'm taking your direction. It says update the diagram to use actual labels as much as possible in the diagram. Meaning. You want to see them labeled as, you know, BIOS and uh, bootloader and um, uh, uh, kernel in the diagram. So, yes, I think so. Okay. Dang, I volunteered for a third one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, um, let's just walk through these. If no one takes <laughs> them, that is just fine. Uh, we did this already. I thought we had. Uh, no, uh, this is the one that we had uh, said we needed Hank to explain. Oh yeah, no, no, but this is confidentiality. We. Oh, we, you're right. We, that is the one that we. You're right. I'm thinking of a different one. You're right. We did talk I about don't... it. But we didn't assign it to somebody. We didn't assign it to somebody. Okay. Uh, okay. I will try to do that. I think I remember what we discussed. We assigned that to Dave. Oh yeah, so this one, Hank. Oh yeah. That's mm -hmm. So you say there's some overlap between this text and the text and the trust model, and I can't see where that might be. I believe you, but I can't see. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
I have to so, also uh, investigate that a little bit. Uh, trust model. You said the verifier this, subsection, right? And this is and this attacker may be able to inference. Well, this is from the privacy section, I think. An attacker may be able to make inference about the contents of the attestation evidence from the resulting effects of timing of the processing. This is privacy considerations, yes, third paragraph, yeah. exactly. So, yeah. and I was referring to seven, so 11 is the privacy, seven is the trust model, and Oops. I have to go back to the actual thing. And read it. So, were those words trying to say that there's potential for timing attacks on attestation systems? Um, the, the last sentence that was quoted was not. That one was about a different point. The sentence before that, I think, yes, Ned, but I don't remember. So, there's so, two sentences. So, this Hank, this one. Hank was complaining that it's redundant, okay, and that we've covered this already. The, um, the, and I. The, the last sentence there, I don't think it's covered any place else. I mean, maybe you can find uh, something, but the last sentence there is talking about the case of, okay, I use a relying party as, so I'm one attester, right? So I learned some things about the relying party by using it as an attester myself, right? I learned what type of, what what the claims need to be in order for him to grant my request rather than rejecting my request. Okay, now that I've done that, now I can watch the traffic and see what uh, whether other requests from other people are getting accepted or rejected. If they're accepted, then I know that they must have sent claims that were similar to the ones that I sent, and there I can, therefore I can infer things. Like I know that it has maybe an Intel processor instead of an ARM processor because I tried it both ways and only accepted the Intel one. And then I can correlate that with other information. And I put all those together and I said, ah, he's got a blood pressure monitor. So so and so was accepted into this club, and it only accepts people who are openly gay. Yeah. Be, right. Because you know, I, I, therefore, I, I, I presume that everyone a, is a client myself and knows what he accepts. So yeah. I can't follow this thought again. <clears throat> we're we're just saying, hey, there's a potential for a privacy consideration because using using um, you know uh, various forms of observation, you can infer what the what the uh, appraisal policy is. And therefore, from the appraisal policy, you can uh, infer the value of specific claims. Is this last sentence there? Right. Yeah. So, so, so one of the take homes from this is that is that it might be that some environments wish to create some kind of a um, pre-approval. Um, you know, essentially, this goes back to the passport model. This is a reason why the yeah. passport model is better than the um, background check. Because is it, you, I think the same attack works both ways, doesn't it? Well, if I go get my passport validated and the claims are put in my passport, mm -hmm. um, then that could be, from a timing point of view, completely um, disconnected for when I I I communicate uh, to get my traffic. I mean, if you're watching the internet and I'm watching a movie, then you're sure about it, right? But no, but I, but I'm saying it, it, if I know that in order to watch the movie you have to have a uh, passport from Outer Mongolia or something, then uh, I know that anybody else that has traffic to that thing is from Outer Mongolia. Right, but what I'm trying to say is that um, 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 the, the attacker would to... have to observe the the the, the passport interaction. The or passport they have issuer to interaction. no, no, no you, they have, you have to observe the. The, the traffic to the relying party, right. right? Just the resource request that you're using the attestation to grant or deny, right? Mm -hmm. Saying, if you know that certain values were accepted by the relying party, right? You can tell that by, by whether the request was accepted. So, you know, did the HTTP get return actual content or did it return an, an authorization denied, right? Or, or I'm just giving you an analogy. Or, 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 or you observe you don't observe any of that, but you just observe this the the quantity of traffic at results afterwards yeah. is presumably larger when they get the movie and lower yeah. if they don't. Yep. Um so so what what I'm saying trying to say is that there are would could be uh mitigations where you download the whole movie um, you know, days in advance, but you only get the decryption key um when that's another point. You yes. know, there. So, so that defeats the traffic analysis pattern. And there's other ways of, of doing that. And passport 
type things. So uh, probably um, support that better than background checks, because if, as you just said, if if I go and to the, walk up to the gate and the first thing they do is reach out to an obvious background checker, then I know that that's happening right at that point. Um, or the, the observer knows. I mean, so uh, I, I, th that's the point. The, the point about this ticket, though, is not about the, the truth of that sentence so much yes. so as the fact that it's duplicated. Yeah, it's duplicated. And I don't so, see a place here where it is duplicated. Maybe in the verifier? No, I I have problems. Uh, I should have made notes on what is the other half of this issue. I did not do that. I tried to find it again. I can't. I, I therefore would uh, uh, render this issue invalid. I, I can't, okay. I can't re reconstruct my line of thought. I don't know. But that is too long ago now. Apparently, the limit here is 21 days. Days, yeah. <laughs> That's All your right, tax so let's, huh? let's close. Yeah. Ah. It's stale now. You can't go forward with it. <laughs> All right. So um let's see here. Do we have any uh this issue is unowned. Issue is unowned. So let's talk about this one. Yeah, I'm rather, this is, I remember, I don't know, a different timeouts apparently. Um, I, I don't know the exact problem, but I really remember that there are two items in here and they are basically the same. Yeah, so, so you're saying that for low security, you lock the doors and limit personality. For high security, you use a special area with locked doors and only let certain people yeah. in. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. So I was like, there's nothing here. Uh, no. Yeah. This comes from uh, Lawrence, I think. Well, I guess I see a slight difference. You know, there's security trained wow. personnel, there's audit logs, there's whatever. Um, for still low security cases. I, I don't like Whoa. the example. This might be simply uh, uh, secured, secured. Uh, uh, locked. Uh, um. and the limit is to personnel is security trains. So you're just specializing limiting, and you're specializing you're abstracting locked door. So uh, it's it's sorry. No. Yeah. So well, I would take so, an attempt at this. I, okay. I, I, I don't so think. I think Hank, Hank, would you prefer combining those two into one use case? So just involving no encryption at all, comma, um, such as locking doors and limiting personnel that I can enter the facility. Period. <laughs> Uh, I, I would I would uh, add this. I would say like like uh, locked doors on low security and uh, a a uh, increase as uh, a dedicated vetting of every person entering the uh, vicinity. But this is a low security <laughs> case, so I and think we need to clarify security. the low security case. I think the mm -hmm. high security case is uh, is much more obvious and maybe was covered in a previous paragraph too. Um, and so I think we just need to say, well, there's a bot. The bottom the bottom could be quite low. So I thought what's the, I, con I, I the thought that his point was to not have two separate cases but combine them, but maybe I got that wrong. So well, I no, think his point is that the low security case is the same as the high security. The exactly. what we do for low security is the same as for high security. So we really do exactly. want want a range of 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 scenarios here within we, the the in, well, I think that we're trying I think the point we're trying to say is that that um there's not a one secure one security fits all that there's a risk benefit analysis that you have to make and that for some devices, the, the, the risk is low and the benefit is low. So don't do a lot. Can also it's a little bit outside of our idea. document anyway. Right. Yeah. I'm, I actually wrote a document. <clears throat> so the, par the paragraph above explains the principle and includes an example. And then there's the next second paragraph continues with additional example if i'm in the right section maybe i'm in the wrong section just i don't i just in general don't think you need an example for everything so what so is that it is this 
I find one one case of the occurrence of of the term low security. Yeah, this is the pet. This is the paragraph right here. Sorry, of of it right here that we were complaining about. Uh, I'm willing to take a chat whack at 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 clarifying this part since I've written a at least an entire internet draft on this topic. And then you can add a citation for it. So, <clears throat> so we could. Yeah. So, so in other parts of the document, we don't use hyphenated high security, low security. We just say, you know, high. I will remove security. that. I will. I will say to remove. I will remove, remove the the hyphenated part. Then. So you're saying we use we we use we don't hyphenate it. Yeah. In in other parts. We use that once. So. Yeah, but here there it's used as a noun, not as an adjective. There we use so, it twice. I, I think the rule that it was being used in the document right now, I'm not trying to defend it or uh, pick on it, but I thought that the rule was um, hyphenate when using as an adjective and space when using as a noun. Maybe that's right. <clears throat> okay, well, um, all right. Like well, I'll low leave security it. security environment is low dash security because it's an adjective modifying environment. But when you have low security, then you have just a noun. Okay. All right, let's, so here, let's yeah, go on in the next see, minute. I've see. I've taken this, so let's go on to the next one that might be here. Um, so we agreed to get BIOS added to the list of things that we're not expanding. Done. It's on the RFC yeah. editors list, and they added an asterisk for us to it, just for yeah. us. Yeah. So then the question is whether these terms need to have better references. Um, TPMs is probably one that shows up on other RFCs that we could use to see whether they have references or if the norm in RFCs is to pass through without references. What's what's wrong with the current reference? I don't is think we have one? any. <clears throat> There's we cite the the, ESE. The, touch, the TCG trusted platform module library part one architecture. That's the right reference, yeah. Okay, uh, we already saw it, so. and that one's done. Yeah, but not at the first minute, whatever, yeah. Um, so that is that is some uh, pure editorial stuff, yeah. So I, I, I don't think this that, is the uh, first. This is the first yeah. reference, and we don't we yeah, exactly. we don't have a reference to it. That's all. I think it's a t global platform. Can you do that? Can you do that, Ned? Embedded Can secure you? elements, right? Is that one's global platform? That Ned okay. is right on that one. Can you point the first one to the reference here? What do you mean the first one? The first well, because the pro the issue is that where it oh, the first the first time the first occurrence is that's the problem. This is the first occurrence of it. Maybe it happens further down, and we we get it. <clears throat> yeah, if they, I don't think we tells me how to do that in Markdown. You're just saying connect the include include references in line in the text. Yeah, it actually, just, I don't think we referenced TEE anywhere. Is the thing you were just highlighting uh, an example of it being referenced in text? No, it's not. That it's it's missing the reference. It doesn't <clears throat> have a. Uh, it should have like. Um, are are there examples of how to do it? Just yes for Markdown. Okay. Yeah. Yes, it's basically okay. two. Uh, two. This is an example. Okay, then I could figure it out. Yeah. But this is this is the example. So then, when you click on that, you go down to this thing, and then you get the actual okay. piece. I, don't, I never found that really great. I always want to go directly to the place, but anyway, that's not how it works. Okay, so I'm going to put you as the guy here, and then I think we'll finish our call. And uh, you don't need a reference for TEE because um, I think we copied the definition into this document that was agreed on by. The TEEP working group. Um, there's different definitions out there, and the one that we use is the one that the IETF defined, um, and it's consistent between IETF and CCC and maybe other people, but it's a little bit different from, say, Global Platform's definition, where Global Platform defines TE as something conforming to their spec, which oh, is okay. which is a 
much more narrow than uh, what we're talking about. It's because they had a global platform TEE API, and when they just use the term unqualified TEE, they mean something conforming to the TEE API specs. Yeah, I don't think, I think we lost that re that definition, Dave. I don't, I'm trying to find it. Um, I mean, it's a, in the TEEP architecture document, so maybe if nothing else, we can reference that. Well, yeah, that's fine, and we have a reference to that some places too, but we don't have it yeah. for, we don't have it for it's, TEE. Yeah. We reference TEEP. Yeah, it's probably okay to reference TEEP then. The TEEP architecture document in particular, which is the one that has the definition. I, I would put it here in this um, use case. Yeah. The reference to TEEP. Yeah, that's the yeah, first use, right? Yeah, that's what I would put it here. And I might also we, include the word we, the ESE and all that stuff too. So, so we refer to TAM as well, which is the, a reference to the TEEP. Do we want to yes, include? Yeah. All of, you know, yeah. for each of those. Yeah. I would just put a single reference, you know, as discussed in reference to TEEP architecture. Blah, blah. Um, a blah, blah, a, right. a right. trusted application server okay. is responsible for it. And that's a reference okay. to the whole paragraph, right? There that's what I would do. Yeah, that's what I would yeah. do right there. Okay, so we got that one. This is Lawrence's issue. And Dave, I think right. we should come back to this discussion after you've re reworked it. Sure. All right. It's after the hour now. So yeah, we could need to wrap. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. And we'll talk to you all next Friday. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay. Good. Bye. -bye. Okay. Good